We should be on any second now. Oh, there we are. Hello, hello, hello there. Facebook land, how are you? This is your girl Gina, and I'm here with my mother, Barbara Burkhalter. And we are here to discuss a serious topic for us and as a family and as a unit and as for many of you out there. So today's discussion is gonna be my mother. Uh, as you can see, she is a beautiful woman, but for some of you may not have known that she is a beautiful black woman. Even though the shade of her skin is a lot lighter than mine, she is a beautiful black woman. So I wanna go ahead and introduce my mom or let her introduce herself. So mama, go ahead and let them know who you are. This is Barbara T. Burkhalter, Barbara Thibodeau Burkhalter from Parts, Louisiana, saying loud and clear to my home folks out there. And I am what you call a Creole woman. That is a mixed breed. I am a mixed breed of people that had white people on their side and people that had black people on their side. Coming together and you get me. I am what they call a Creole, and um, I'm I, I'm from the uh, huh, how you want to call it? I'm a, uh, my father's people were Native American. Right. right. So okay. uh, so I, that was the other thing I wanted Mother to tell you, because um, a lot of people look at her color and they wonder how she got it. She have you know was her mother. Uh, black white you know what was her dynamic of her family so that is one of the things that she's going to go ahead and tell so mama tell them about um my grandmother and grandfather and then uh your grandmother and grandfather or their parents okay my um my mom uh my mom's mom my grandmother was an african-american uh, uh woman she was a uh, dark skin she had the big nose, she had the full lips. Her husband was white. And so she and, and uh, my grandmother, grandfather had my, my mom and some other uh, uh, siblings, but that's, that's my mom's side of the family. Then my dad's side of the family is, his mom was uh, Indian American. Indian, not India, but Indian. American and um, his father was Creole also so they made me okay. right and um, just so as you know I want to show this picture this is a picture of my grandparents this is my mother's mother and her father and you can kind of see the Indian in my grandfather and then the, my uh, grandmother, my mom looks almost just like my grandmother. And that baby in the picture, just so that you guys know, that's me. <laughs> so that is me, my grandmother's holding me, and that's my grandfather. So just, uh, just so that you can know um, what the dynamics were of my mother's family. So that's my mother, my mother's mother and my uh, grandfather. And I was alive when Mommy was alive. Mommy was uh, my grandmother's mother. And like she said, she was a dark-skinned black woman. Dark skin. And um, her husband was a white man. And how was that for them? Do you know or can you speak to any you of that? Know, you know, th the amazing thing, I never... Um... I never discussed it uh, with my uh, grandmother. I never knew what it was. All I knew is when my grand, when I was ten years old, I went to live with my grandmother. And um, unlike the kids today that question everything, you know, when I grew up, you were uh, you didn't question stuff, okay? But uh, I knew he wasn't of our, of of uh, of the uh, black people race. I knew that right away. And uh, so I never really had to have, I never had that conversation about about skin or nothing like that, you know? Right. And, um, and just so that you know, uh, my mother, out of the siblings, my mother and my Aunt Mary were the two lightest of the children. 
So I'm going to show you a picture. And this is uh, my mother and my Aunt Mary. And you can see they were the two lightest of the family. Uh, here's a picture. <laughs> this was on a cruise. Uh, I took my mother and my Aunt Mary on a cruise. So that's what them on the cruise. And you can see... Um, that yes, they are very, very of the light complexion. And a lot of times it was taken back because uh, a lot of people didn't understand whether they were white or black. And then my mother also had siblings that had a little bit of melatonin in their skin. And when I say a little bit, I mean not, a, not that much. But that's my aunt. Izzy, my Aunt Ruth, and my Aunt Velma. Now, they were still light-skinned, and uh, but not as light as my mother. They still passed the paper bag test. So, Mama, can you please explain to them what that paper bag test is for the people out there that don't know what that is? Well, it, it was a certain uh, accepted standard, okay? If you were um, paper bag shade or, uh, or, or lighter paper uh, of the paper bag sh shade, you were more accepted. Um, you could, uh, there are certain places like in New Orleans that really, really went with that paper bag test, you know, where you can, uh, uh, where you were considered uh, how we want to call it, an uh, uppity nigga. Okay, but the word nigga was still in there. Right, and yes, and mama, uh, mama uses that word, and it's really weird for me because mother will use that word, and she is a black person, and we all know that in the black community, that word is usually accepted for us to say it. But mother, being the color that she is, right. and if she says the word, gets a whole nother connotation it, right. it it's it's really um I'm you know degrading. I, I, she I'm degrading is, the black people right because they don't necessarily may see her as being a black woman right. now i did show you pictures of her siblings and then um i wanted to ask my mother this um how was it for you growing up with the skin color that you had? Well, you know, as I reflected on it yesterday, it, 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 yesterday was, was real traumatic because it brought back feelings I didn't know I had and I still feel. Uh, when I was growing up, it was so sad because it, I, I learned that I was of a different shade and I was taken differently when I started elementary school. And the kids there would call me um, would, would call me white and they call me long nose and they'd pull my hair to be cruel and, and everything. Then my darker skinned friends that were friends with me and uh, if, if some of their darker friends did not want to be friends with me, then it got to be where they had to pick between being a friend to me or not. And a lot of times I'm hard to say that they didn't choose to be a friend with me and it had nothing to do with me and I would cry and say you know I didn't born myself I didn't born myself my parents born me mm -hmm. and that was uh, elementary school high school got a boyfriend in high school then they would tease the boyfriend and say you want the white girl you didn't want the one with the long nose, the light skin, the long hair. Then the boys, being not knowing how to handle this, are uh, and want to stay, um, want to stay here. We say want to stay with their black friends, their darker skin friends. They would then they wouldn't be my boyfriend no more because I didn't match the standard that they wanted. Uh, that was acceptable, not, not wanted, that was acceptable, even if they liked me. So that got, a, you know, but I ended up with a boyfriend. <laughs> anyway. Right. And, um, you know, growing up, 
I think about myself in with a light skinned mother. And for me, a lot of times it, I didn't feel that way. Um, my father, my biological father was in the air force. So we live mostly up North and I didn't really feel it until I came down South. And then when I came down South, I really saw the difference in me. Now, that being said, I want to say that that wasn't just outside. It was also part of my family, in the family. Just so that you know, out of all the grandkids on my mother's side, myself and my sister are the two darkest ones. Um, so we had a whole nother experience. So because we were darker, my grandmother, and now don't get me wrong, my grandmother loved me. She loved me to death. But my grandmother wouldn't let me play in the sun. I had to play in the shade. I couldn't go out at a certain time because I would get too dark. Um, you know, there were just certain things that I couldn't do. And it, it didn't really, I didn't really understand it as a child. I got to understand it as I got older. So, you know, you know, you play out in the shade. That, that was just it. And then when the sun wasn't at its peak and, you know, maybe I could go out, you know, early in the morning and play and stuff like that. But when the sun was at its peak, I was sitting underneath that tree or I was in the house. And, you know, my parents never made it that, hey, you're light skinned, so you're more than the other people. Or um, uh, my parents stress to be to get your education okay and to speak properly because that was the um that was giving you an edge they just wanted us to have the best and that's like all the people they just went about it every every everybody went around about it in a different way but my parents never stressed about me being lighter than than people that made me any better than anybody what would make me better is if i got educated if i was educated if i went on to school did uh, uh good in my school went on to college they wanted you to have an edge in the white world because that's what we lived in a white world but i was too light to be i was too dark to be white and I was too light to be black. So I was like in between everything. And I had to mill through it because my parents didn't have any words to help me with this. Now, um, we talk about, now mom's gonna talk about college and when she went to college because that is a whole nother aspect. Mother didn't go to college in the nice little area that she lived in. So in the towns, usually, you know, as we as we all know when we live in our towns and especially small town uh usa when we live in our towns people know us they accept us they like us and stuff like that but the minute we move outside of our borders outside of our comfort zone um we get a whole new aspect of people and reality starts to hit so mom in college um i want you to to explain to the people how you um how men treated you uh, because at that age you were in college and you were away from your parents so how did that go about wow in college that let me know that i had a plus on on, on some women because they um i had boyfriends and, and and amazingly all my boyfriends with darker skin because my thing was too much lightness was not gonna go okay so but I had boyfriends that had that were always darker skin and I had a uh, lots of boys that wanted to be my boyfriend okay so I I was uh, like on cloud nine then I just thought wow you know I got something here but that was that was them and how were you treated though well, well, and let's go from the men and let's also talk about the women at okay. the school. Okay. Well, the men I had no problems with. The, the, the men were wonderful. The girls, it seemed that if, uh, okay, if we were uh, together, okay, 
they would and people would be talking to me and everything they would feel an inferiority complex i didn't they did that i would be talking and because i spoke proper as they said um it would seem that they would all of a sudden be shined back from from the conversation that I would be having with somebody, or they'd be rolling their eyes like, hmm, 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 you know, like, wow, yeah, she thinks she's some big stuff. And you know, I never had it in my mind that I thought I was some big stuff. It was the other people that had it in their mind that I was something other or better than them. I never thought that. That never crossed my mind. I only wanted to be accepted because of who I was and what I could bring to the to the relationship or to the friendship and whatnot. I had loyal, I had uh, a couple of loyal friends in starting in my elementary school from the 10th grade. I had a loyal, loyal friend. Her name is Marie Wilson Scott from Parks, Louisiana. And she was she seemed to have understood everything. I don't know if her mother made her understand everything, but her mother loved me like a daughter. She would always say that was her, uh, her other daughter. She had daughters, but I was part of that. And But it seems like Marie was the only one that just accepted me for how I wanted to be accepted, just a friend. You know, I didn't have to put on airs like they said put on airs it wasn't putting on airs it was me being me and that was barbara so then when mom and you went to college so um after college or or in somewhere between there you ended up having me having a kid right and your child did not come out like you I and i dark. prayed i prayed to god for that all while I was carrying Gina, I prayed that she'd come out dark because I didn't want her to come into this world and deal with what I dealt with, which I thought was difficult to deal and with. And you know what? And that's the funny thing because a lot of people on the other side, you know, would pray that their kid would come out a little bit lighter. I remember um, when I was young, you know, and again, I say my parents love me, my grandparents love me, I believe my aunts and uncles, they all love me. But it was just a part of our society, the way things went. So one of the things that I do remember was uh, one of my aunts used to call me a little black skunk. And I was a darker, I was the darkest grandchild, but she would call me a black skunk. And I never, now that I'm growing up, I know that that necessarily wasn't a term of endearment. But that's what she called me. And then I also remember when I went to college, I had a boyfriend that was of a darker complexion. His name is Charlie. And um, I brought him to, uh, I think it was, I, I don't know where I brought him. I brought him somewhere Birmingham, with me. Alabama. No, it wasn't in Birmingham. It was, we were still in Louisiana. I think you guys had come to visit. Okay. And I brought him to uh, parks to, to visit and stuff. And I remember my aunt saying, Gina, you need to add a little cream to your coffee. And when people in the South say that, what they're trying to tell you is, what kind of kids are you gonna have if you have a dark skinned man? You have to have a lighter skinned man so that your kids will come out lighter. So For basically, have so to have an advantage. And that was their mindset. That was what we were raised to understand that light skinned and just like in the slave time light skinned uh people were able to work inside they were able to get some perks the darker skinned keep people were outside and they had it a lot harder so i th i believe that that's what my aunts and uncles were trying to tell me um but you know it it, it was just sad that they had to say something like that but um and that's how, how I felt. And then also as a child, it was really weird um, growing up and you know, you say, hey, this is my mom and people not believe you. That was another thing that, that got me. And the other thing that got me was, I remember one time me and my girlfriend, we were at, I think it was an Omega event. 
And my mom was sitting with Omega Wives and me and my friend, I brought my friend Daphne Plummer, um, Daphne, Miss Joyce Hay. Uh, I brought Daphne with me and me and Daphne were sitting on a car uh, in the back just talking or whatever. And the ladies said, hey, where's your daughter? And she pointed to the car like my daughter's over there. And they assumed that Daphne was my mother's daughter instead of me. Daphne was is lighter skinned um, and, you know, has a more comparable complexion to my mother. But I always thought that that was really weird, too, because people would not pick me in a lineup, <laughs> so to speak, as being her daughter. Right. You know, if you had a bunch of different shades of, of people in the thing, even though I might look like her, even though we might have the same hair or whatever, because our skin color was not the same, they wouldn't pick me in a lineup to be her daughter. Right. Go figure. But um, that was um, kids. When I came out um, and I was that dark skinned baby, um, what was, was that reaction? Well, it was like when I was with Gina and I had my husband, you got the, uh, he got a white woman, okay? So she was accepted, yeah, because uh, uh, I, I had a black baby for a black man, all right. But now, when I was alone with Gina, it was like, huh, you are taking care of this black baby. You babysitting this black baby, you know? And it, uh, well, it bothered me because Gina would be, saying uh uh mama like we went shopping tina was an uh, uh i i think tina was in high school and i was at one end of the store and the sales clerk was at the other end and tina was calling me and the sales clerk was going to look for a lady her color and when i came to tina said uh, that's my mom right here you know and like the, the sales clerk lady like took a look back here. Now this was Birmingham, Alabama. And like she took a look back, you know, like, oh Lord. What what do you say, you know? I can't get my color back. Right. So there's there's different aspects to all of this. Um, you know, there's and from what um one Teresa's on here and she says she had the same thing as when she um, got pregnant, she married a darker skinned man and she prayed also that her kids came out of a darker shade. And then again, we have some people that, that wish that their kids would come out of a lighter shade. Um, and it's, it's really, um, it's really, you know, kind of disheartening well, um, a little bit, but I mean, but you have to understand where we were in a society and what was going on at the that time. time yeah. And even at this time, mm -hmm. there are people that still feel that same way. Mm -hmm. So, um, and ladies and gentlemen, if, if you're out there and you have a question, please put it in here because I am going through and looking at, you know, your comments. I'm sending some little waves and stuff like that. So if you do have a question, let us know. And uh -huh. where you are, if, please shout yourself out. If you are in Louisiana, let us know. If you have the same experiences and you're in Texas or up north, let us know. Shout out your city. I want to know where you're where you're tuning in from so that I know, you know, we're reaching. Where we're, where we're reaching. And also we have to remember that different areas have different um different expectations and different uh, values that they, they came, that they up, came with. up with. Yeah. So yeah, you know, this is us. This is my mother's experience. Yeah. This is no, she's speaking from her experience only. Mm -hmm. She's not speaking about everybody else. She's not um, advocating for all light-skinned people. Right. I'm not advocating for all dark-skinned people. We are talking about our personal experience. So if you have something that you would like to say, please Please let it be known in the comments. I'm going to go on to the next question that I have for my mother. And I said, um, did you have any questionable things that happened to you as an adult or, or in your life that happened to you because of your color? And yesterday, uh, just that's, uh, let me preface this. The reason we're calling this part two is because I did the same live yesterday but the sound was terrible and I did it on a different page and it didn't. So that's why we're doing it again. So I know some of my mother's answers yesterday. I didn't know any of my mother's answers. We did this as, 
as a, uh, you know, fly by the seat of our pants type thing. So today, um, I knew, I know some of the things that she's going to say, but we don't have it scripted. So we might miss some things out and stuff like that. But was there any thing that happened that was questionable for you? And I would like yesterday you talked about, you have to get in the camera because you have the camera. Uh, yesterday you talked about when you got hired at a school right. in Sacramento, California. And I'd like you to tell them that because I thought that that was absolutely um, amazing what you okay. said. Now, in Saint, and when I left Louisiana, I was teaching in uh, St. Martin Parish schools. When I left Louisiana, I went to St. Bernardino, California. That's where my husband was stationed. Now, I applied to, um, there was one ad about a, a kindergartner. So naturally, I had my certification in kindergarten. I was like, well, I'll find. So everything, remember now, uh, back there, everything was a face-to-face -face interview. They had to see you. So I applied, and oh, the lady was so happy to see me and everything, you know. And and when I checked African American, or uh, I, uh, uh, it was like a uh, black. It was wow, you know. You got the job. So, but you have to remember that this was a Jewish temple. A uh, uh, nursery school, okay, and in that time, people had to have a quota of blacks on their in their uh, faculty, okay. So, in order for her to uh, get the approval of the board, now she had to tell them that she had a black person. So the the the, the man came to visit the superintendent or whatever you call them, and um. So he it went to her office, and, and so she's like, yep, yeah, I've got me a black girl here, you know. And then, so they wanted to see who the black girl was. So they brought him back to my classroom, you know. And I didn't know I was on, I was like a, 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 a caged animal in a zoo to be a, a goggle at, but you know. But it, I was accepted because, I had a light skin, and they did not want to to uh, upset the parents to have somebody with to uh, bring somebody darker in authority in the school. Have to stay in the camera. Yeah. Okay. So, and and that's something that we um, experience as black folks. Um, I remember I have a I have a light skinned friend, a Sorrel because I'm a part of the Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Z5, have my sorrows out there. But I have a sorrow named Johanna Avila. Mama knows Johanna. Yeah. Johanna is a, of a light shade. She has the silky hair and everything like that. And Johanna has never claimed to be white. She's always claimed to be black. She's always claimed to be black. But one of the things I remember when we were in college, Johanna said, you know what? I'm going to go and get me one of those highfalutin jobs. I'm going to pretend like I'm white. And then I'm going to bring all of y'all, my black friends in <laughs> and everything. And that was one of the, that was one of our ongoing discussions uh, at school. Um, but mom, uh, that being said, do you know anyone that's what we call uh, passing? So well, some people I, might call it that. Okay. Well, well, my, I had an aunt on my daddy's side that passed. She went, she moved to California and passed for white, never had any children because you can't have children that might come out black. That would defunct the whole thing about you. And I had an uncle that passed for white. And when they were in California and that was it. And the reason they did that folks, it wasn't so much as the skin, but to have the advantages that would give them to the white folks. So with them being white, they had all the advantages of being white. And I, uh, you know, you, 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 you can't fault people for wanting to have a better life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. that was just that. Right. And there's a lot of people out there that you might see and you're wondering, are they, because nowadays, you know, it's, it's, it's seen a lot more right. because we have a lot more mixed couples, right. but there are still advantages to being white, period. Right. So, um, or having a lighter skin shade. So that is one of the things that, um, 
that we wanted to discuss. And just like, um, you know, even in the world that we have today, I was looking at some of the pictures of the people that were killed by police officers and all that kind of things. And I can tell you one thing that they all had in common. You cannot mistake them for being white. They were all definitely black men. So they weren't of the lighter shade. Um, none of them. I didn't see any. If you have one that you've seen that is of the lighter shade, please let me see that. Because as far as I'm concerned, all the men that have been um, affected, that have, have, have been brutalized by these police officers, have all been of the darker shade. So for someone to say, you know, I'm going to take advantage of being light skin, you can't really blame them for well, that. Because, and, and at that time, that it, you didn't have black people in positions. You didn't have all the things. It was a white world, and you just lived in this white world. So just like when I was hired on at, at uh, uh, South Central Bell, which is Bell South, and I was at and t but when I was hired on, just to tell you, I went to that office, and it was near closing time. And it was about maybe 15, 20 minutes. So the lady said, well, ma'am, we don't have time to interview anybody uh, right now. And I said, what? I said, you don't have time to interview uh, the voice with a smile? And right there, she saw my persistent. I said, I am what you're trying to hire. So I said, so you should have time for me. That lady, she interviewed me that day. And when I went home, she called me and gave me a starting date. And it was because of my persistence. Not because, um, not be I didn't come in there begging for a job. I came there and told her that I was what she wanted and needed at the company. But I doubt seriously if one of my darker skins sisters would have given that kind of uh, response to that white woman would that white woman have accepted it so much because that white woman would say i'm in authority here you know and then that's the way she beat down on the on the sister however i went in there not thinking that she was all that white and over me i went thinking i had the qualification she was looking for huh does that make me because I'm light any better? No, I was just more persistent. Huh. Uh, she was more persistent, but other, the other thing that you have to remember is that the lady that was there is more accepting also. So you have those people that, you know, well, let me give her a shot because, you know, she's still a lighter skin. She looked almost, a light, she, my mama lighter than a lot of white people, so <laughs> I'll say that. But, um... But she's more accepting. For us darker skinned people, a lot of times no is no. Right. It's period. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to know it. They it's that's it. So and I will tell mama this. Uh I remember um and some of my friends might know that um when we joined the military, I joined in nineteen eighty seven. In nineteen eighty seven, I remember going to my reserve unit and all the officers, all the people in charge were white. All the soldiers were black. We had very few soldiers that were white, but we were all black. And that is one of the reasons why I went into ROTC to become an officer, because I believed that we needed more people in leadership that were, that looked like me. And that year that we did that, it was five of us, five black females that went to that cadet that that joined that ROTC program. Four of us was at the same unit I was in: Barbara Drummer, myself, Marjorie Lede, and um, Clarissa. I forgot Clarissa's last name, but Clarissa. Those were the four. We were the four black females that were in the reserves that um, became officers. Now, out of all five of us. Uh, Clarissa didn't didn't finish uh, because she had some family issues that she had to take care of and that's no fault of her own she had to go her own path but the other four of us females um, because one of the girls was in another unit 
all of us, um, I think I'm the only one that's still in the military now. I put in my retirement paperwork, but all of us have been officers. All of us at least made it to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, I believe two of us made it to full bird. So that is an accomplishment. And that was something that we did purposefully so that people could see us and, and have us in leadership leading our fellow soldiers that look like us. Gina made me aware one time that she went into a meeting and um, she, by the way, Gina's about five, four. No, I'm five, one and okay. a half. Okay, ah, give her a <laughs> half, give her her half. And uh, she went in a meeting and she said that uh, uh, the soldiers were all sitting down, you know, and when they introduced her, well, they're looking for a grumpy, uh, you know, uh, a grumpy old white yeah, man. They for, yeah, <laughs> a grumpy old white. And then here she comes in through the rank, and it's like, oh, they gotta look down, you know. She, her rank is that they gotta look up, but because of her height, they gotta look down, <laughs> you know. There you and go. I said, oh my goodness. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that was uh, just so you know, that was that's me. Uh, but I have another question, and this question uh, was brought to me by my brother. So Van sent this question in, and let me show you my oh, brother. It's Van's birthday! Hey, Van! Oh, yeah, and it's his birthday old. today. <laughs> this is him. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm showing you Van with your no teeth and, and everything like that. That's kindergarten there. That's yeah, kindergarten. That's, my, that's my little brother. Um, I thought I had another picture. Oh, here's uh, another picture of my older brother. There's uh, Burke Vaughn and Van and uh, Mother. Mother is a first degree black belt. Uh, so they were all in karate and taking their karate classes. So, you know, that was one of the other things that they, they did. And it was funny because mama used to teach um, self-defense classes. And one of the things that my mother would do when she came into the self-defense classes, she would say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this off the table right here, right now. Because I know you wonder it. And she says, number one, I am a black woman, <laughs> period. Number two, this is my hair. These are my nails. <laughs> she said, now that we got all of that out the way, let's start our self-defense class. Yeah. And um, because my mom didn't want them sitting up there in the whole self-defense class wondering, who is this woman, mm -hmm. you know? So she let them know that in the, in the first place. So um, here's my sister and me, Tina. So like I said, out of the whole family, you could see us two girls are the two darker of the family, and there's Mama. And then I want to show you one picture, and I think this is kind of cool. Mama says she always loved her dark-skinned man, and you know there's proof in the pudding. Here's Mama and Daddy. <laughs> so that was my mother. I don't know, I'm trying to get so the light doesn't hit it. But that was my mother and my father, uh, my stepdad, and uh, he's passed away now. But as you can see, they were a very happy couple, and. Um, very, very uh, contrasting in skin color. Oh, yeah. So my brother, he sent a message and he said, how hard do you think it was for a son growing up in the South being light skinned? And again, I showed you a picture of my brothers. They were considered light skinned. And one of the girls on here said that, I think it was Billy, said a lot of times when you see pe people that are light skinned like them, a lot of times they think they're Hispanic. They says, okay, they don't think that they're black. So, uh, mom, how do you think that was for Van? Oh, well, you know, for Van, uh, when Van was born, he was small. He, um, um, uh, he, he, he was a little small baby, cute as could be, cute as a button, but he was small. And so as a child growing up, I always uh, worried about him being in fights and everything. And so, so you are always off this camera. Come on, scoot over. <laughs> scoot over. Move your chair over a little bit, cause I'm looking at this thing and you just not in this picture. <laughs> okay, there we go. And uh, and so, um, I, I thought about it. I said, you know what? He needs to be able to know how to fight because he's gonna get picked on. First, because he was light skinned. I knew about that because of me growing up and. Uh, uh, being uh, uh, African American with a lighter skin. So, um, when Van was little, we put a karate movie on 
and he'd take a bottle and go on a pillow and he'd watch that movie if it was an hour long. He'd watch that movie and wouldn't even worry about it. So when we got to Birmingham, Alabama, I saw a flyer with a self-defense class, a karate class. I thought I'm going to enroll him in there. I went there. He was too young. They told me they'd take him when he was six. So I went over, and uh, when he was turned it, I went on out, got him in. Now, the high, when he got to uh, elementary school, where the kids all knew that he was taking karate, when he got to high school, it was a plus. Because now the guys that would maybe antagonize him or stuff were afraid because he took karate. And because he was award-winning person in karate. He wasn't just any student. We went all over the place, and he won all kinds of uh, titles. So I was very secure that I had given him something that he could help him stand up and be in black. So she just wanted to make sure that he had the uh, ability to protect himself. So that's yeah. one reason why. And she didn't want him to have to refer to a weapon, right. which might get him killed, but right. use his ha his actual hands and fists. And if I must say myself, he is very good. Uh, <laughs> but so is she. <laughs> She's very good at um And, and my, that also. Son, my son, uh, uh, Bourbon, he got in invited to the USA um, uh, Olympic team for uh, karate. So he's one of their members, or they have some other progress they gotta go through. But anyway, he's invited. <laughs> so we are very proud of them. And we say this, and Mama is saying this, because um, with all the stuff that's going on now in our mm -hmm. world, and well, not even in, that wor in the world. We, in the world, we have COVID going on. But right here in America, in the United States, we have some stuff going on that we shouldn't have going on. We shouldn't even be focused on this. This should be one of the last things that we should be focusing on. But it is sad that we have to. So, Mom, I wanted to give you the opportunity as a mother of a black man, of black men, um, as an aunt to black men, um, how are you feeling right now with all the stuff that's going on in the uh in the united states right now okay my son bert vaughn he was a police officer in burbridge louisiana okay and uh and then van being the black guy black man that he is you know i just i just worry about him i just worry because i feel that and i feel like all the mothers of the black uh 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 that have black sons. I feel for all of you, it has nothing to do with your color. Just the fact that you have a black man that is a black man in this predominantly white world that I am so, so worried about it. I am so worried about it because it seems like the world should be concentrating on things that's so much more important than the color of our skin. And if we would just focus on loving one another and treating others the way we want to be treated, this world would be such a, such a happy place to be in. So all you black mothers with sons, I'm praying for us, praying for us. So, um, because we all know we've seen it on television. We've seen it. Um, a lot of us has, have, have have witnessed it firsthand. Firsthand. You know, um, not only as our black men, um, you know, it's like they already, they have a, a strike against them the moment that they're born. You know, it's a, it's a strike against them. They're going to grow to be big, strong, smart, intelligent. Um, uh, uh, they're going to be, you know, lust for, because yes, women are going to lust for them. And not only black women, but white women, um, they're going to be um, envied, you know, all these different things. And, you know, we have to try and raise them, not only to be black men, but to understand what's going on in society and how they have to react to certain situations. 
-hmm. it's sad that some parents, um, mothers and fathers, aunts, uncles, mentors have to talk to our black men on what to do when you get stopped by the police. And they're, they're supposed to serve and protect. But you know, uh, what's, what's, what, what, when I was coming up, was more difficult for me was I was too light to be white and I was too, I was too dark to be white and I was too, wait a minute, how does it go? <laughs> I forgot, but, but anyway, I, I was that in-between person, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I had to deal with white people at one end and I had to deal with darker skin, black people in another. Yeah. And when Jane Brown made that song, I'm black and I'm proud, my goodness, the country erupted. Mm -hmm. the, com the country just erupted. And so then the people would be singing it to me like, uh, you not black, so you don't have the right to sing that, you know. And my thing was, but I am black. White people don't see me as white. White people see me as black. I am black, and I am proud to be black. You know, it, 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 um, it was something, but I made it through. I made it through. Right. So we did have a lot of people that, um, that came in on here. Um, I would like to say thank you to all of you. I mean, we had a lot of people on here. So uh, I could go through and probably name all of them, but it will probably take me a long, long, long time. But I see you all. I think I waved at most of you on here. I sent my little, yeah, I sent my little waves um, to acknowledge that I saw you. Uh, if you have any questions for my mother, I would appreciate it if you would send them. She will love to answer them, um, you know, uh, personally, you know, either getting on here and, and typing something up, you know, during her break or, or something like that. But we are loving the fact that you all got on here. And I want to acknowledge before we go, like acknowledge my, my daughter, Tanya. Tanya, hey baby, and I have two beautiful granddaughters, uh, Ariel and Kirsten, that I really, you know, they are two beautiful black women, and they are beautiful, I must say so. Right, but, right, and <laughs> and uh, and you also have. Oh, oh, and I have my daughter Tina that teaches at L no at S L C. See, so shout out to you, Tina, and I love your haircut. Yeah, and Tina also, um, you came in late, Tina, but we did cover um, what it was like for us. Well, I covered how it was for me as a child. I, I didn't really speak for you, for you, but I did cover on how it was for me. Um, I don't know. I think you probably had some of the same experiences. I think you had it a little um, more. I think you were... It was a little bit more difficult for you because you were in Birmingham, Alabama versus I was raised in Louisiana. So people knew me um, there. So um, people knew me there. So it was a little bit different. Um, in Birmingham, people didn't really know my mother. Uh, we had just moved there. So just even my friends didn't know my mother until they came to my house mother and my father and one of my friends uh carolyn she was like that's your mother i always thought that that was some black man walking around east lake park with this white woman <laughs> and i was like no i said she's not white that's my mom <laughs> she's black so um that's one of the things that i always have to let people know is that you know we tease her and uh, i'll say you know uh, that white woman over there look at that white woman on the sofa or whatever <laughs> And I remember I said that, and one of my friends really thought I was serious and thought my mother was a white woman. And uh, I think Yolanda had to tell her, no, girl, she was playing. Her mother not white, her mama black. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we wanted to go ahead and touch on this subject because we know that there, even though we are black in America, there are different shades of black. There are different um, ethnicities of black, you know, because we have our black uh, we have our black Mexicans, we have our black, um, you know, for our black people from Africa, our Caribbean black, we have our Spanish black, we have our French black. So there are all different types of us out there. Mother speaks Creole. Say something Creole, Mom. Como yo te digo, como se Creole, Papa. 
Uh, Miss hey, Joyce. Spike. And Miss Joyce is on there too, so you can tell hey. her something. Miss <laughs> Joyce, t'arrangement les bon 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 comme arrivé à à à la Louisiane. Mon gars, coulis chez toi. <laughs> so there she is. So she's not only black, she Creole, and she speaks that Creole too. So we would like to thank you for um for tuning in uh and and paying attention to this. So if you have, like I said, keep the discussion going. Uh we have a lot of people out there that are of different shades and everything like that. So please replay it, tag your friends, let them see it. Um, my mother talked about a bunch of different things on here that were very important and clear. And some of you can really get into it. I believe at the beginning, who did we have at the beginning? Somebody that said, um, Robin, Robin Rochon, Robin Rochon. And I know Robin Rochon from college. And Robin is also a girl that, um, she can pass for white too. Um, she's Brent, uh, Brent Rochon's uh, cousin, I believe. So um, we have people all over. That... Blue eye. I mean, you know, my grandfather had blue eye. Doctor uh, Brent Rochon has blue eyes. Or, or I mean, they, you know, are they blue or green? Uh, Blue or green, something, but they're they, they not brown like ours. Right, okay. right. Glenn Labbe, he yeah. has black man, green eyes. Right. You know, so we have a lot of them out there. But um, we just want to say thank you for yeah. tuning in. Thank we are going to sign out and be looking on the, be on the lookout for us to do another one of these. Maybe not as a serious subject. We might have a little fun next time. Right, Mama? Right. Right. We're going to have a little fun the next time. But be on the lookout for Mother Daughter Team. We're going to hit it up on Facebook. We're going to shout out. We're going to just keep making these videos so that you guys can join us and talk to us and everything like that so thank you mother Kisses. yes and mama tells me never leave her without giving her a kiss that's right Good. never know when is she gonna have that opportunity again you know what i'm saying right never know when that kiss is gonna be my last so right. i always leave my mother with a kiss <laughs> so thank you guys thank you i'm gonna sign out let's see how we turn this off press finish go ahead press that little button right there mama there you go